Hi there, and let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at organizing media and utilizing the smart bins function inside of DaVinci Resolve. I emphasize this over and over again to the point probably of paranoia amongst my students, just how vital housekeeping is in post-production. This is especially important when you're working with other people. Now, on a very, very small production, there might only be one person working on the post. But for the most part, productions tend to have a wide range of people, and it could be a significant hindrance if lack of organization slows down someone else's workflow. In the previous video, I'd already imported a short project that I'd been working on. Right now, all my media is shared amongst the roles that it was captured on and separated into the recording days. This is a structure that makes sense for a lot of workflows, but for something like a narrative, it might make more sense to break this down into its respective scenes. So for example, I know that role one pertains to scene one, which is how I'll label it. Role two, on the other hand, is scene three. And role one on the second day is scene two. I can then drag all three of these into the transcoded folder and delete those other bins that were there. I could also now import my audio folder and create the bins for that as well. To add a bin, right click inside the bin list view and select add bin. To rename a bin, click and rename it. And you can right click and select delete bin when you no longer want the bin. In the top right corner we can see we are currently in thumbnail mode, which allows us to preview what the clips look like and even scrub through them by hovering over them with our mouse. But we can also switch over to list view, which contains far more information. At a quick glance we can tell what the file name of the clip is, the reel that it came from, and its starting and ending time codes, the duration and the amount of frames, etc, etc. There's a lot of really useful information. You can also right click on top of the column names and choose to either activate or deactivate columns that you need or don't need. You can click and pick up columns to rearrange them. You can also organize your clips by clicking on the name of the column and clicking again to reverse the order. One of the more versatile and useful columns is the display name column. This is the name that will appear on the clips when they are imported into the timeline. By default, they're non-human readable names as taken from the camera. But you could choose to rename these to something more human friendly without ruining the original file path from which it came. What's also cool about this column is that it allows for a certain level of coding that integrates the metadata of the individual clip. So let's say in this clip, I determine that it's scene one, slate one, take one. I can input this information into the metadata panel. Let me just do this for a few of these. I can now type in something like display scene shot and take information. As soon as I clicked off, it's given me 111 as the display name. I can click on this and command C to copy and then paste this into the other clips. And because all these clips know what their scene shot and take values are from the metadata, they will update accordingly. If you'd like to know more about the sort of metadata codes you can use inside the display name column, you should check out page 194 in the DaVinci Resolve 12 manual, which shows all possible combinations of codes. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.